talk on crescent con configurations in 2D. So the advisor is uh, A.V. Pallison. And uh, so the presenters are Fiona Young, Sean Haight, Sam Kotler, and um, Jamie Hughes, James Hughes. James. <laughs> Hello? All right, so we're doing crest configurations in two dimensions. Um, our problem is based on Erdos's distinct distances problem, which comes from a paper he uh, published in 1946, where he asked what the number of distinct, dis the minimal number of distinct distances between endpoints in the plane is. Um, and he conjectured that this was on the order of n over root log n. And this conjecture was proven in 2011, more or less. Um, and so our, uh, our problem is similar, um, but to describe it, we need to first define a crescent configuration. A crescent configuration is um, a set of endpoints in the plane with n minus 1 distinct distances uh, labeled d1, d2, up to dn minus 1, such that d1 occurs once, d2 occurs twice, and so on. Um, we also have to require that the um, crescent configuration satisfy the condition that um, no three points can lie on any line, and no four points can lie on any circle. Um, because otherwise, we would be able to construct arbitrarily large um, crossing configurations, such as um, this line here, where if you equally space the points, you can have uh, D4 or D3 occurring three times between each point, D2 occurring twice, um, and D1 occurring uh, between the endpoints. Um, and you can create an arbitrarily large crossing configuration doing that if you relax the condition. Um, but Erdős um, conjectured that uh, the number of crossing configurations as we've defined them uh, goes to zero as n grows very large. Um, and so far, only crossing configurations up to eight points have been found. Um, and so we're looking at uh, crossing configurations on smaller number of points to get an idea of how to sort of build them more systematically. OK, so um, <coughs> this is just two example crescent configurations uh, on five points. If we look uh, at the configurations, we can see that the purple distance occurs four times, the green distance occurs three times, the blue distance occurs twice, and the red distance occurs exactly once. Um, and uh, no three points lie on a line, and no four points lie on a circle. Our main reference for uh, the project was work by some students under A.V. Paulson, um, in which they attempted to classify crescent configurations on four and five points. Uh, the general strategy was as follows. Uh, the first thing to notice is that instead of viewing them as points in the plane, you can view them as labeled graphs. And so uh, in order to generate all possible crescent configurations, uh, they first wanted to generate all the possible adjacency matrices that could correspond to a crescent configuration, and then uh, group the adjacency matrices by isomorphism, and then consider one representative from each isomorphism class, uh, and then determine which of these adjacency matrices actually correspond to a configuration of points in the plane, and uh, which of these points actually lie in general position. Uh, there was a, a subtle error in their work um, where they threw out isomorphism classes um, where graphs could contain an isosceles trapezoid. The logic there being that isosceles trapezoids are always inscribable on circles. And so uh, if they had an isosceles trapezoid, they couldn't be in general position. However, it's possible to have two graphs in the same isomorphism class. Uh, one with a trapezoid and the other without a trapezoid. And so by throwing out the entire isomorphism class, you're missing out on uh, configurations like that on the right. So uh, our work was basically to kind of like uh, remedy that error and look for crescent configurations that they would have thrown out. Uh, the basic process was uh, rerun their code, but this time uh, take out the the uh, line that throws out the trapezoid configurations. Um, so we started with around 12,600 uh, adjacency matrices. 
uh, that got grouped into 98 isomorphism classes, uh, 32 of which we determined could have been thrown out in their process, uh, 17 of which had geometric realizations, and 10 that could be realized in general position. Uh, our fourth group member, Sam, uh, worked on optimizing a lot of the code so that it could possibly be run on six points and uh, classify crescent configurations there. Cool. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So as Sean just said, um, we were trying to kind of uh, fix this error where you could have a trapezoid, uh, an isosceles trapezoid isomorphic to um, that second image that was shown earlier, which is actually um, uh, there's, there's a subgraph of a parallelogram um, inscribed in there. And so at the very beginning, when we were trying to find uh, code and algorithm for all of this, we wanted to first try to visualize an example of um, the situation. And so to do that, we created the crescent configuration on four points. Oh, I should probably move. Yeah, a crescent configuration on four points um, at the bottom. So if you look at the four points at the bottom, that's a parallelogram. And we were trying to kind of just like add a fifth point and see by solving a system of nonlinear equations where that fifth point can possibly go and have the fifth point, have the five point configuration still be a crescent configuration. Um, and so later we were thinking maybe we could come up with, with a different approach where um, as long as every crescent configuration on five points has a subgraph, which is a crescent configuration on four points, we can just build up instead of whittling them down from the original um, isomorphism classes and whatnot. Uh, unfortunately, so, well, first of all, uh, in this slide, if you look at the top, there's some examples of crescent configurations on four points. Um, and at the bottom are the 27 that were in the paper of crescent configurations on five points. And so I've circled two of them. If you look at the top one and the bottom one um, that are circled in red, you can see that the one on bottom uh, is on five points, but there's actually a subgraph hidden in there, which looks like the one on four points. Um, but unfortunately, this wasn't the case. Uh, if you simply look at number two, um, which I've blown up for you on the side, it turns out that no matter which one of the five points you remove, it will not look like any of the crescent configurations on four points. Um, so some further work could be done in this area, uh, possibly, if somebody wanted to try to build up instead of um, uh, narrowing down. <coughs> So one possibility is that a lot of the crescent configurations on five points do have a subgraph minus you know, a small exception. And then we can try to find properties of that exception to try to build up from there. Cool. Yep, that's the end. <laughs>